there's a frightful chill outside. I don't know if you heard, but the weather around here has been turned upside down. Well, not just around here, around everywhere, but, oh my goodness, you're not just anywhere. You're not just anywhere at all. You are here in my business. It is called the Jefferson Avenue Way Station, where we serve McAdams beer, or as the locals say, Mac Adams beer. That is to emphasize the fact that it is not merely a name, but also a condition. It is similar to that tar that binds the gravel and makes, uh, what do they call it nowadays, asphalt. Now when you consider the asphalt, well, that sounds funny when you say it with emphasis because uh, there's a naughty word in there. I can't say it, otherwise a psychic trap will constrict my neck. When you consider this asphalt, is it special because it is hard, because it is durable, because it is so slightly soft, though durable and hard enough to support a vehicle? It doesn't seem very durable. It seems like a little bit of water um, freezing in it will just start busting holes in it all of a sudden. Now, you can't make a house that is going to do that. Houses are going to get wet. On the other hand, you can't make a road out of the same materials you'd make a house of. There are numerous uh, engineering issues that I am not, uh, strictly speaking, familiar with, being that I do not have any sort of engineering education. Well, the official engineering education. A human being is naturally equipped with some engineering skills. Actually, any sort of vertebrate and some insects are equipped with a limited amount of engineering skills. Have you ever seen a tube of grass that supports a small spider? I rest my case. Also, that's not an insect. You're right. I'm glad you corrected me there. You, you didn't say anything. Um, I'm glad of that because I... I don't want to hear the sarcastic and pedantic tone of your voice when you say this. I want to hear you only say kind of things, and I will impel you to say kind of things. How will I do that, you say? You didn't say that either. You said it with your eyes. Um, I will do that by serving you a lukewarm, uh, not necessarily room temperature, but a lukewarm glass of Mac Adams beer, Imperial Oak Age Stout, aged uh, a long, long, long time. All right, I, I recently put these uh, little caps onto the glasses because you see they keep uh, overflowing there. All righty. Oh, oh, excuse me, spilled a little bit. I can't give you this. This is way too much. All right, let me uh, pour another one here. Uh, right on time, uh -huh. see that? I slammed it shut, in a sense, risking more spillage, but in the end, performing the ultimate task, which is to serve you the desired drink. There you are. Uh, well, while you're drinking that, I would like you to prepare the $10 bill that I will need in exchange for it. That is my, that's my job, my friend. My job is not, well, I don't make that stuff. I... Really, all I do is man the tap. This stuff is made down in Delaware County. In, uh, well, it's not the brewery itself is not called Mac Adams Brewery or Mac Adams Liquor, Mac Adams uh, Beverages. It's called uh, uh, A Case for Bouillon, which is a strange name because it sounds like an essay. It sounds like an essay purporting to be stock for soup. However, Bouillon is the name of the person who founded that brewery. I guess it was in the 40s, back when breweries were, well, the businesses were just opening up. You see, it was only 20 years ago that breweries became legal again. And they wanted to hop right on that business. The boys overseas, they needed their 
uh, Imperial Oak Age Stout. And matter of fact, they were clamoring for it. So, uh, what was his name? I, it was a remarkable name I remember that I, I read, wrote down one time because it wasn't necessarily a remarkable name at all. It wasn't memorable. It was, um, it was Jeffrey. He went by Jeffrey, which is not a common name to go by. If you, if your name is Jeffrey, people will call you Jeff or Jeffer or Jeffy. People will go by Jeffrey or no, excuse me. They will go by Jeffy before they call themselves Jeffrey. It is that embarrassing as a name of name. And this Mac Adams, not Mac Adams, his name wasn't Mac Adams, it was Bouillon. This Jeffrey Bouillon, he was quite embarrassed of his name. He went by Bouillon instead. Uh, well, because he was, a, he was a New Orleans guy. He was from the deep south of New Orleans and escaped uh, because his family was very racist. Back in the 1860s, he, he saw that they weren't going to budge. From the very beginning of that uh, decade, right there, that fateful decade, he saw that they were not were not going to really adapt their morals to well, I'll say the tolerable stage, the logical stage. So he he took all of his well, he didn't do this. He wasn't a a winkle in the gleam of his father's eye. He did not even a gleam in his father's eye. He wasn't a gleam in his father's eye. He wasn't a, a notion in his mother's head. He wasn't even a thought in his grandmother's uterus. Now you tell me, are there thoughts in uteruses, uteri? Well, this is not the right forum for that sort of discussion. Not because it's indecent, but because I don't have that particular organ. I, I thought it might have been likely because, uh, you see, I've got uh, plenty of space for that sort of organ. But apparently this is not mostly an internal organ cavity. No, this is, uh, this is mostly abdominal fat. I'm, wish, I'm sad about that. I wish I, wish I didn't have to admit that. I wish I could tell people, no, this is not fat. This is an, a gigantic small intestine. A, a vastly coiled, ropey, knotty, vet, large and, and small intestine that's just pushing my muscular stomach out so much that I have the appearance of a man who is, well, he's eating a few too many tortilla chips, uh, blue uh, tortilla chips, which... Are just such a fantastic food. I saw a uh, a documentary about those one time, and they showed the dough, or the the grind, or the or the tissue that they used to make these tortilla chips, and it looked like vomit. Now, did this do anything to turn me off of blue tortilla chips? No. No, I um. You could show me those being digested. You could show them being dropped into gastric acid and melted into sludge. And I'll say, pass me the blue tortilla chips and the hummus and the salsa and the, the soup. You know, that we're doing that now. We are dipping blue tortilla chips into soup and stew. Why? This is a new, this is a new era. We're coming on to a new decade. We are going to eat our foods differently now. Well, we are that bold, aren't we? You haven't even touched your beer. This is a bold new era where we sip the beer slowly. We hold off on our impulses. And we hold on to our drink without putting it in our mouth. I don't see how anybody can have anything in their hand that can be put in their mouth, and they do not put it in their mouth. That is called the oral fixation, I believe. And it is an incontrovertible, well, that's not the right word. It is an unconquerable desire. It is a desire so great that it's like, it's like needing to urinate. 
Matter of fact, uh, I need to do that right now, but I can't trust you not to serve yourself a, another glass of that Mac Adams beer. You see, I, I would clamber over this counter, go around back where I do have a toilet. I do not just urinate in the alley like a, like a dirty old man. I have a bath. I have a toilet back there. On the outside, yes, but one can't always hold themselves back with propriety. You know, if you're as long as you are using that toilet, it shouldn't matter that it's exposed to the window out there. That there's a family of five living in a one-bedroom apartment. That their harsh conditions are compounded by a local barman, a local pubman who urinates in somewhat in public, I don't say it's public, that piece of property is mine to put my garbage in. It is my personal garbage disposal system. What sort of garbage do I have? That's a good question. I do not put a napkin underneath that uh, little glass ears. I don't use a cardboard uh, coaster. Very wasteful, those things. I did once consider using a pressed piece of silver with a small with a circular indentation on it uh, t uh, for you to put your glass on, but surprisingly enough, there are some prohibitive costs involved with that sort of idea, which is sad because that is one of the many hurdles that you face in the battle for creative expression. Humankind, we don't want to do anything but express ourselves creatively. We've demonstrated that in the past few thousand years. We don't want to hurt each other. We don't want to just live. We want to live with purpose. And that is why I don't have a toilet on the inside. That and there is only one room in this unit in addition to the alleyway. It was a special deal I got with the uh, owner of the building. His name is uh, Bulokov. And no, I'm not just looking at that copy of The Master and Margarita that's sitting on the table next to you. I recommend reading it uh, because I believe the joy of that book is not in its dramatic reading. I think it was a mistake to adapt that into a drama. That is purely literature. You know what it's like reading? It's like reading a summary of the G20. Why? Because it is a it is a fun mess. It is a fun uh, sort of acrobatic mess of things that are purportedly high stakes, and yet you cannot look at them that way. You can't look at them as high stakes because otherwise you'll burst into tears and say there is no war in my life, which I've done before. I have regretted the lack of order in my life. Why did I think there would be order in the first place? You haven't asked that yourself. I've a I'm asking myself this question. You might be asking yourself that question in your head, but you have not evidenced it through your more conscious verbal communication. I'm being somewhat big-headed here right now with the words I'm using. I'm pretending like I'm being... Eloquent, and really, I'm using just the words of a uh, of a boasting mid uh, middle school child. Well, you're right. You're right. I'm not worth a, a darn. See, I'm not going to curse again. A few weeks ago, a customer came in, and I started swearing up and down. I I was blue in the face. The wall started turning blue. My blue veins started standing out on my hands, and it changed me as a person. I believe that if a, if a vampire had come in and tried to drink my blood, that that vampire would have died of septic shock of, the, of its ghastly stomach. And I would have perished as well because out of blood loss. And in my dying moments, laying next to this dusty vampire, which is now just dust, I would think... What is in a vampire's stomach? Does it have a stomach? When they say that it is an undead creature, does that mean that it had 
ceased rotting at some point. And then now it's just filling up with the blood of its victims bit by bit, becoming more bloated and ruddy by the second. Is it just, is it like that anime, Attack on Titan, where the giants aren't taking sustenance from the people they eat, they just fill up with the people and then vomit them out? Well, I'll tell you this right now, I actually met with the, uh, the writer of that comic book. I, I was in, um, I was in Chiba the other day. Literally the other day, I just, uh, this morning I came back off the plane. And I met with the creator, his name escapes me. Which is odd, because I sought him out personally. This question in mind. And I said, what, did you have vampires in mind when you wrote this? And he said, no. The people who came up with vampires had my work in mind. And I, I immediately responded, because I, I, though I, I'm not indicating right now, my, my Japanese is perfect. Uh, besides my appearance, people often mistake me for Japanese. They said, you could be Japanese, except you don't look that of that ilk. I asked him something, but I forgot. We were we were both very drunk. I don't normally drink, but he uh, he brought out a, a bottle of Suntory, and I and we um, well we were sitting on our our knees uh, next to a low uh, table, and then we started yelling at each other. We started pointing fingers and screaming at each other about politics of the of the former century, of attitudes of imperialism. And the ongoing, uh, uh, you know, conflicts, the fallout between those things. And we ended, we, we embraced, and we apologized to each other. I don't know why he apologized to me, but I certainly apologized myself. I remember that much. And then I fell backwards, and I sort of rolled like a, the way a plank might roll down a hill. I rolled that way out the door and I might have left some sort of waste products behind sort of like the way a dung beetle leaves a trail on its way carrying its food with it I oh I want no I didn't leave that kind of waste product I didn't leave a, a trail of dung my my attitude has not dipped so low as to go to a foreign country and desecrate it in such a way. No, I'll leave such embarrassing behavior to my native country. All right, I, um, speaking of which, I am coming, coming upon an internal emergency. There is a pressure situation, if you know what I mean, wink, wink. And I'm going to have to have you finish that one off. Do you have $10? Please, can I have that $10? I, I, this is, uh, you see I'm stepping from foot to foot. I'm going to have to get over that uh, thing. Uh, you know what? It's fine. Uh, uh, what's your name? Uh, it's just Jackson, eh? Your name is just Jackson. Okay. Well, Jackson, um, I'm going to have to close up shot. Why don't you wait here on the outside? Um, just th throw the money into the, uh, throw the dollar bill and maybe some coins for a tip, please. I uh, I'm a working man here. Um, just throw it into the alleyway. Uh, don't look at what's going on in the alleyway, if you please, for goodness sake. Uh, that would be embarrassing on my part. All right. Um, th yes, th thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Uh, uh, please come again to the Jefferson Avenue Way Station. Goodbye. 